the JAMA Network. Hello, my name is Derek Angus. I am Professor and Chair of the Department of Critical Care Medicine at the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine. The objective of this paper was to summarize the findings of an international task force charged with revisiting the definitions for sepsis and septic shock. The rationale for this work was that the last definition was now 12 to 13 years old, and since then there had been a lot of changes and advances in our knowledge about the pathophysiology and the epidemiology of sepsis worldwide. The task force was convened by two major international professional societies, the European Society of Intensive Care Medicine and the Society of Critical Care Medicine. Those two societies charged two co-chairs, Mervyn Singer from University College London and Cliff Deutschman from North Shore University in the United States, to convene a task force which ended up comprising 19 experts from across the world with diverse interests in basic translational clinical and epidemiologic science relating to sepsis and representing the specialties of critical care medicine and infectious disease. The task force convened about beginning about two years ago and then through a series of in-person meetings and correspondence by email engaged in an iterative process to both examine the old definitions and explore uh, opportunities for improving the definitions. Notably, quite different from prior task force, they also used extensive systematic review of the literature and a number of empiric data analyses to inform their deliberations. There were several key findings to this task force initiative. First of all, we noticed that the terminology of sepsis had become incredibly confusing and that a number of terms were essentially obsolete or outdated. For example, terms such as septicemia really don't help in that many patients can be septic without um, having positive blood cultures. In addition, a term that had been used a lot, SIRS, or the Systemic Inflammatory Response Syndrome, really was not very helpful because one, it's not actually conceptually true that all sepsis patients mount an aggressive hyperinflammatory response, nor are the clinical criteria of SIRS particularly helpful in diagnosing patients for sepsis. The second thing was we felt it was helpful to try to have an updated overarching conceptual definition that better explained exactly what sepsis is. That definition is that sepsis is a life-threatening acute organ dysfunction secondary to a dysregulated host response to infection. Put simply, among all patients who are infected, is this, it is the set of manifestations that lead to infected patients doing badly, developing acute organ dysfunction and potentially dying. The third finding, exploring a number of large databases, was that Perhaps the simplest and most practical way to define this concept definition with clinical criteria that could be used in practice was to use the well-known SOFA organ dysfunction score, where a score of two new points in SOFA among patients thought to be infected would be diagnostic of sepsis. This score is, of course, most practical to apply when all the data are available which is most typically, for example, in an ICU setting. The fourth finding is that outside the ICU, where not all that information is available, a newer, simpler score called QSOFA or QuickSOFA, which simply is a screen of respiratory status or respiratory rate, mental status, and blood pressure, that score, if a patient scores two points on that score, is in fact at very similar and elev elevated risk of doing badly. And so we're calling that a screen for sepsis, where if someone is infected or suspected of infection and they score positively on QSOFA, 
then they should be considered to get a full SOFA score, be admitted to the ICU, or otherwise placed under close supervision and managed very carefully because they are at high risk of doing badly. The subset of sepsis, septic shock, is more easily and consistently measured by searching for hypotension in the absence of hypovolemia, in other words, hypotension that persists after fluid resuscitation, and in the presence of ongoing signs of hypoperfusion, most notably a lactate of greater than two millimol millimoles per liter. Our conclusion with regard to these four or five findings is that we believe that this represents our best understanding from consensus de deliberation and extensive examination of multiple very large electronic health record data sets. Having said that, we do not see this as the end. We welcome efforts both near and in the long term to both extensively validate some of these measures, such as QSOFA, and we welcome, as we have further advances in our understanding of the pathophysiology and pathobiology of sepsis, we welcome uh, the development and incorporation of new biomarkers for sepsis. There is no gold standard as of yet for sepsis. And so these clinical criteria represent our estimate of the best working definitions today, but we look forward to ongoing work in this area.